predator life in the Earth's oceans has been dominated by varying groups of animals of both wildly different ancestries and ways of coming about, whether they be armored placoderms, monstrously large sharks, or massive sea reptiles. After the extinction of the lesser, megatooth sharks like Megalodon and macrotorial sperm whales became more prevalent. After their decline and extinction, as is the case with all taxa in time, the power vacuum was soon filled, and one of the most dominant of those that filled in said gaps were the orca, otherwise known by the moniker of killer whales. Known as some of the most brutally efficient killers in the world's oceans today, having a global distribution and a varied diet depending on the regions they live in, the extent of their prowess, while often thought to be known for much of their prey, is still a matter of debate regarding others. This debate and resulting discussion is specifically concerned regarding their predation on the largest extent animals alive, and in some cases of all time, the large whale species. This video will discuss their behaviour and techniques for hunting these animals, and how vulnerable different species are to them, and how some manage to defend themselves against these formidable adversaries. Orca's perception and methods of killing has led to even experts exaggerating their bloodthirsty nature, being able to even target the most iconic of oceanic predators being great white sharks, placing them under selective pressure to avoid the large black and white dolphins. It should be pointed out that attacks on large marine mammals of the scale of large cetaceans is restricted to the mammal specialising ecotypes like the Type 2 orca of the North Atlantic, the Type A and B orca of the Southern Hemisphere, and the transients of the North Pacific. These different ecotypes, over time, evolved into mammal specialists independently from a piscivorous ancestor, and then radiating out into varying dietary niches, which, along with the varying cultural differences, may lead to speciation events in the future. These mammal-eating orca are generally quite a bit bigger than the fish-eating populations, with the largest individuals being able to reach up to 9 metres and weighing up to 11 tonnes, whereas the fish-eating animals reach maximum lengths of just over 7 metres and being outclassed even by the female mammal-eating orca, which are of a comparable length, with male animals being larger than females. While they've been known to pose a threat to smaller cetacean species, not to mention the young and sick individuals, people have disagreed on whether this threat persists onto adult healthy animals, and if successful kills are frequent enough to constitute any major ecological impacts, and also how it affects their behaviour and responses. Some researchers were even on an extreme end of the scale, believing that adults of animals like blue whales were immune to predation from orca, although this, as we'll soon see, has been called into question. It's been found through consistent research that whale species can be categorised into two groups regarding their response to orca, these being a flight species or a fight species. Animals like sperm whales, balanids, grey whales and humpbacks are known to both confront and directly fight back against and combat orca, whereas flight species, which encompasses each member of the Balanoptera genus, or the Rorquals, as they are also known, prefer instead to swim away with high bursts of speed, up to 50 km per hour in speed in some cases. These animals have been known to, regardless of their size, making no further attempt to fight if an orcapod does manage to slow them down and catch up to them, with them seeming to realise that if they fail to outswim their pursuers, then they're already finished. The flight species, including animals like brides whales, minke whales, and sai whales, are all on the smaller end of their group, with brides whales, while having less successful attacks on them than compared to the other two, they have been verified, and animals up to 12 metres long have been known to be successfully hunted down. Sai whales have also been known to be killed after being chased into shallower waters near Chile, and minke whales being about 7 to 8 metres on average and maximums of around 10 to 12, are among the smallest of baleen whales and as such are easily the most vulnerable. Even for these small whales though, attacks on them can be hit or miss for the orca. While orca can swim faster and reach higher top speeds, minke whales have better stamina and so can outswim them if they're detected early enough. In all of these attacks and in those to be discussed, orca will display consistent strategies to take on larger cetaceans than themselves, with them following this typical sequence of engagement to do so. Lowering vocalisations to avoid detection, biting down on their flukes and pectoral fins to impede their movements, leaping and slamming their bodies onto the whale to drown them, ramming to inflict serious injury, often towards the jaw, occasionally stripping off and consuming the flesh off of whales while still alive. The largest of the whales that employ flight behaviour, the fin and blue whales, are more unknown both in reporting and accounts, with fin whales only really having one confirmed kill, with said individual said to be about 50 feet or 15 metres in length, which would correspond roughly to a subadult or an animal just on the verge of sexual maturity. Blue whales were thought to be immune to predation once they became adults due to their massive size, 
Though recent accounts, three in fact, have shown that Orca can indeed both target and kill them in large pods, with two of the kills being those of calves ranging from 10 to 14 metres, and the largest being an adult of between 18 and 22 metres, which would be an animal of around 40 to 60 tonnes. This is well within the adult range of the local, rather humorously named, pygmy blue whale population in Australia, and from what the researchers could tell, was a healthy individual. Because of their size though, successful attacks are pretty rare, as evidence for how this will have been recorded, although evidence of their teeth raking can be evidence on a lot of individuals who survive their attacks. The next set of whales, instead of fleeing, instead will actively fight off their attackers, and can do so with great strength. Southern right whales have little in the way of evidence of attacks on adults, with them alongside their calves sticking to shallow waters, as the low depth limits the potential directions an orca or a pod can approach from a level 2D plane. They've also been known to form an apparent rosette formation in response to them approaching, with whales surrounding either a sick family member or a calf, with the heads facing inwards and the tails facing the orca. When not in a group, right whales can violently roll around and thrash their tails, which has been known to in some cases strike orca clean out of the water, which is really impressive. Bowheads also incorporate similar strategies with their thrashing behaviour, also relying on retreating towards sea ice to protect themselves. Said thrashes from these animals have even been known to kill attacking orca, as one was seen being hit by the fluke by a panicking individual and subsequently dying on impact. Studies of rake mark frequencies, when orca marked their teeth onto their sides, found that there were higher percentages on larger individuals, and since they were taken from whales that had survived, it's evident to see that orca hunting successes are far lower against adult whales. When it comes to thrashing realms, grey whales are the pinnacle of this for being incredibly violent and aggressive when cornered, especially when they have calves, being dubbed as devilfish by whalers in spite of their otherwise very friendly nature, among the most friendly in fact of any large cetacean. To sometimes avoid attacks, they can sometimes, if they're nearby, utilise kelp beds to help mask their presence from the orca's echolocation. Spoon whales, like blue whales previously discussed, were for the longest time thought to be immune to their predation because of their size, although this is no longer thought to be the case with improved documentation and accounts. Calves and females have been noted to be killed many times by orca, although they do have measures against them as well. Just like right whales, spoon whales can deploy a rosette manoeuvre in combination with threat displays to defend. Male animals have not yet been known to have been directly killed, and in attacks where they are indeed present, they are able to drive them away pretty successfully oftentimes leaving the safety of the pods to actively chase them off. They only seem to be attacks when they interfere in protecting others of their kind, as orca pods target the females and young, so it doesn't seem like they are targets for them, unlike adult balloonids like blue whales, very likely because of the latter's relative passivity when attacked. The sex segregated distribution also hints at orca being not nearly as big of a threat to bull spoon whales, since upon reaching maturity, they will move to live in higher latitude waters that are more densely populated by orca, whereas the females and juveniles stay in lower latitudes, where orca are comparatively less common. Male spoon whales, in spite of their size and temperament, are still however put off when they detect an orca's presence, showing that they do fear what they can do to some extent, with them being known to cease their solitary foraging and actively engaging in anti-predator defence measures. It therefore appears that amongst all of the whales so far discussed, the mortality rate for spoon whales is exceptionally low in comparison, and the males specifically are among the few animals that orcapods can't seem to reliably kill, although they are not alone in this. A key animal yet to be talked about is the iconic humpbacks, famous for their songs and breaching behaviour, are interestingly enough among the cetaceans one of the best equipped to fending orca off, so much to the point that not only has there never been a confirmed kill of an adult humpback, it is in fact known that there are more documented instances of humpbacks attacking orca than the other way around. They remain as the only species of large whale to actively mob and chase them, and will even go as far as to interfere with their hunts against other animals like grey whales and seals, which has been speculated by some as a form of altruism, although it's been debated a good amount, some instead suggesting it's more to make sure that the orca population is either injured or starved, so that humpbacks are safer during their migrations, although given their intelligence, I wouldn't put it past them. Their long pectoral fins, among the largest proportionally among whales, may also have evolved as weapons to use against them, with such an adaptation tilting the balance of power in the humpback's favour, with them being observed to look like they engage in slashing motions, using them against orca. Their flippers are massive structures, being about 5 metres long, one third of their total body length, and also weighing over a ton each, while being by far the largest cetacean flippers, both in relative and absolute length. They are also very manoeuvrable, and they can use them in tactical ways. Furthermore, in addition to their incredible impact power, each flipper also has a knob or deleting edge, 
which is often than not also encrusted with large barnacles that further adds to the flesh-tearing prowess of the structures. Various other functions have also been suggested for them, including both prey hosing, temperature regulation, increased swimming proficiency, and acoustic signaling. Though regardless of their initial evolutionary impetus, it is very clear that they are a very useful piece of weaponry against Orca, and appears to be a major reason why they are able to consistently fend them off. Unexpectedly, there is a whale species quite a lot smaller than those other ones that actually has the best known matchup racings against Orca, them being the long fins pilot whales, animals that are known to consistently intimidate them. These more unusual looking cetaceans have a well known history of mobbing Orca up in the North Atlantic, and despite their smaller size, they appear to be able to overwhelm them with their large pod numbers, and will chase off Orca pods that don't even predate on them, instead doing so on fish. This has led to the hypothesis that these animals, at least in this region, are potentially confusing these harmless orca with a separate mammal-eating population that has since gone extinct, and so continually target them potentially because of passed down knowledge of their former danger. Even outside of the North Atlantic, these cetaceans will go out of their way to mob any orca they can detect, and stand out among the three cetaceans known to be able to confidently deter these most effective of predators. Regarding their hunting and their methods, several questions and topics still remain, one of which being the role of adult male orca. It was once assumed that males were necessary for killing these larger cetaceans given their larger size, although this has been continually debunked, and it's been found instead that often males would remain in the periphery of hunts, and only occasionally participating near the end. Hypotheses for mature males suffering from extra drag from the larger pectoral and dorsal fins may be a reason, along with females being given priority in hunts because they have more young to feed. Their size also hinders them regarding stamina, and means that they are not as able to chase faster moving animals for as long, and also lack the same maneuverability in shallow environments. This is supported due to their presence being more noticeable in attacks on the slower fight species of whales, and minke whales in offshore waters, since they are better able to catch up to them due to their slower speed. Another big question remains as to how orca influence the population dynamics of adult whales, and how they conduct themselves. It does indeed seem apparent that calf mortality to orca is a big selection pressure in influencing both the distributions and migration routes, though by contrast, their effects on adults seems very minimal to non-existent. Calves and juvenile animals make up the big majority of documented kills for species larger than minke, and of these finds, the vast majority of individuals within species receive their rake marks from orca teeth when they themselves were juveniles, and only minorities seem to receive new ones over time. The adult whales that have been known to be killed, like the previously mentioned blue and fin whales, were smaller than average, at 20 metres and 15 metres respectively, and it's very likely that the Antarctic blue whales, while the average adult, is up to 25 metres long and about twice as heavy as the pygmy versions, some well over 100 tonnes. It seems that these animals, at least, are indeed virtually immune to orchid predation. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whatever that may be.